Hello, and welcome to Aerospace Engineering Fundamentals. Uh, this is the first lecture of the course. I'm Jeff Defoe. So let's begin by reviewing the syllabus of the course. Uh, the draft version is on the Blackboard site right now. And this is probably going to be updated in, in small ways over the course of the first couple of weeks, weeks of class. Um, but we'll discuss the version that's presently there uh, now. So here's the syllabus. So first, let's talk about office hours. Tentatively, I have my office hours scheduled for Mondays and Wednesdays 8 to 10, um, as well as Wednesdays 1 to 3. Um, hopefully, there's at least an hour or two of that six of those six hours in which uh, you're available. Um, if not, uh, then I would like you to either, uh, well, yeah, I'd like you to post on the discussion boards uh, about that so that we can determine some alternatives if necessary. For now, I'll assume these times will work because these are common office hour times for all of my classes I'm teaching this summer. Because of their common, um, I can't use the courses virtual classroom for these. So I have a common virtual classroom set up and here uh, are the links for the Monday and Wednesday morning sessions and the after Wednesday afternoon sessions. You can access those right here. In terms of email, I don't want any student emails uh, over the course of the semester because I'm just going to be teaching too many students and it, uh, I don't want my email inbox sort of exploding. So instead we're going to use the course messages module in Blackboard. This essentially is an email system that's, com that's confined to within the Blackboard site. Um, so you can send emails, uh, and this is all demonstrated in the uh, course introdu introduction video um, in, under Meet the Instructor. You can have a look at that if you want to know more details. But um, basically, if you've got any private messages that you need to send to me um, and or to our GA, um, to, for example, if you're inquiring about you know, a mark you got on some assignment or, or something like that, um, then uh, course messages is the way to go. We do have a GA. Um, uh, she has sort of a half appointment for, for this course. Um, she does not have office hours because of the limited hours that she has to work in the course. Um, but uh, you could contact her via course messages if needed, um, particularly maybe with questions regarding grading. Um, and uh, she will also be uh, helping to monitor the discussion boards. So the way this class is going to work is that most weeks there's two lectures, notionally on Monday and Wednesday. Um, all the lecture material is available in multiple formats. So um, for most lectures there's a video uh, of me sort of doing handwritten lecture notes with voiceover. Um, those handwritten lecture notes are available as PDF files. Um, and uh, the, there'll be lecture slides uh, as well. The tutorial is Monday afternoons, 3 to 5 p.m. Um, these will be held as live sessions in Blackboard Virtual Classroom. Um, they'll be used for a couple of things. Um, they'll be used for conceptual problem solving, uh, interactive exercises based on the recent lecture material. Note that uh, th that's their, their primary use and there'll also be opportunities typically in there for you to ask questions, uh, any other questions either related to homeworks or course material and I may do some example problems from time to time as well. These tutorial sections will be recorded so that students who are unable to attend will be able to review them later. There's going to be two labs in the courses. I'll present these as videos of the devices in operation. So there's one involving a small jet engine and another involving an axial compressor um, and I'll post data for analysis. The discussion boards are a major part of the course um, and these are going to be used extensively as a way for students to communicate with me and the GA um, and for students to communicate with one another. Um, and not only will this essentially play the role of all the informal interactions you might have in a face-to-face -face class where you um, clarify something with the person sitting next to you or you ask uh, a question of the instructor at the beginning or the end of class, um, in addition to all those functions, uh, you will also be graded on the discussion boards. At the end of the term, you will self-select your three most important contributions to the discussion boards. These could be really good questions you ask, 
answers you provided, etc. Um, and you'll submit that as an assignment for grading. I expect that on average you'll need to spend about eight hours a week on this class, everything included. Let's look at the plain language course description. So this is the description from the course calendar, but that's not very interesting. Um, let's look at the plain language one that I've written up, which really says, what are we going to do? So this is the first course in aerospace, in the aerospace option in mechanical engineering. Uh, and it's going to teach you the fundamentals of aerodynamics and propulsion for fixed wing aircraft. Much of the technical material will be used just after it's taught in the prerequisite courses, fluid stew and applied thermodynamics. In this class, you're going to learn to think like an aeronautical engineer, which perhaps surprisingly is rather different than the way mechanical engineers tend to think. This is going to affect your approach to problem solving and design moving forward. So a lot of emphasis is going to be placed on your conceptual understanding of the material. We're going to cover overall aircraft sizing for a specific set of requirements, wing aerodynamics, and jet engine propulsion systems in detail. We are going to also cover a variety of other topics at a high level for example, rocket propulsion and materials. The course Blackboard site is the hub of your resources for this class. During the tutorials, we're going to do interactive uh, problem solving using Pull EV. Um, this is a system, uh, we'll, we'll walk you through setting this up in the first tutorial, um, or I might post a small video about it. It's very straightforward. Um, I've got a personal address here, polyv.com slash jeffdefoe214. Um, and you'll go to this address in a web browser or um, by using the polyv app on a phone. Um, and you're, you're going to be able to anonymously put in answers to the conceptual problems that we'll be looking at in the tutorials. The course has a textbook. Uh, there's an ebook version available to purchase from the University of Windsor Bookstore, Fundamentals of Aerodynamics. Um, this is a required book. There will be homework assigned from the book, and it's also quite a good one to read. Um, you will probably use this book again in aerodynamics and performance in fourth year, so it's worth the purchase. There's a couple of other books that we're going to have excerpts from. These will be posted to Blackboard because they're small enough uh, that they fall under fail de dealing copyright. Uh, laws. Um, so one is Aircraft Design, a Conceptual Approach by Raymer, and the other was Introduction to Aircraft Design uh, by Fielding. But the Fielding book, you can temporarily get uh, the entire book right now until the end of June online for free, um, but regardless, the excerpt, um, which I think in our case comes from the first edition, will be available on the Blackboard site throughout the, uh, you know, as needed throughout the course. We're also going to use some web resources, specifically several uh, things taken from MIT OpenCourseWare. MIT OpenCourseWare is essentially the open educational resource of MIT, and many of their courses have been transformed into these OpenCourseWare packages, which have much of the material um, in the way the courses were taught. Because this is an online course, um, I've drawn up uh, with uh, sort of inspiration from some, some colleagues in, in other parts of the university a social contract for the online interactions. And this is posted already on the Blackboard site under Week 1 Resources. And I expect all students to adhere to it at all times uh, in any r interactions related to the course. Um, also, uh, you should review this uh, because the um, I, you're, you're going to be expected to start to follow it. Sorry. Um, Another thing to note is that all the materials that I post to Blackboard are for classroom use only. You don't have permission to take that material and share it elsewhere on the internet. So let's look at the approximate course schedule by week. All right, so here we are, lecture one on Wednesday of the first week. Um, starting next week, we'll have sort of a regular week with a Monday class, a Monday tutorial, and a Wednesday class. Typically, the conceptual problems on Monday will cover the previous Wednesday's lecture as well as the lecture that just would have happened that Monday morning. Um, so partially, this is meant to help encourage you to stay on top of the material because every Monday afternoon, you're going to sort of need to have seen everything from the prior week. Uh, where things were sort of getting a little different here is sort of in the first week of June, um, the first assignment will open. I'll talk a little bit about the assignments. Uh, the assignments are basically going to replace 
um, exams. And they're going to be open-ended uh, synthesis work based on each of the sort of the subtopics of the course. Uh, moving on, um, you're going to get an airfoil design project later in June. Um, that'll be a, a written report. After the study week, there'll be a second assignment, etc. And things keep moving along this way. Some of the class periods we'll use for, for labs. Um, basically, this day, instead of there being a, uh, a, a lecture video for you to watch, there'll be a short video of the lab followed by some reading of sort of what you're expected to do in that lab. We'll move on and talk about propulsion. Um, there'll be a, 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 another lab report on a 3D printed com axial compressor. And the structure of the course keeps going on in that way. Let's get to the uh, learning outcomes. I'll take a moment to go through these. Um, there's kind of a lot. I have 16 learning outcomes. <laughs> Um, but uh, I can sort of synthesize or summarize them briefly. We don't need to go through every one. Basically, you're going to learn about heavier than air aircraft basic principles and applying fluid mechanics and thermodynamics to them. Um, we're going to look at airflow sections and wings, propulsion systems, including turbo machinery, rocket engines, uh, specifically rocket nozzles, I would say, and then sort of high level information about control systems, landing gear, avionics, and aircraft structures. You'll also need to demonstrate that you can use uh, uh, basically write technical reports. This last one's uh, in one that I want to uh, talk about for a moment is that this is related to those curated contributions to the discussion boards that you're going to need to professionally communicate the questions and answers to this material, uh, or to, to, to course related material through the discussion boards. So now on to the grading. So there's what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight items that will be graded in this course. Uh, none of them are worth more than 14% of the grade. So this is a big change from what you're used to, where you're used to having exams that are worth big chunks of the grade. Can't really do exams in an online course. Um, so I'm going to try something very different. Um, so there's going to be four uh, sort of technical assignments and one discussion board based assignment. So for the first four assignments, um, they're each, uh, they're either worth 10 or 14% of the grade, depending on how much material they cover. Uh, and basically these are going to be open-ended assignments related to various chunks of the lecture material, as you can see here. In addition, there are three reports you're going to need to write and submit. These are all individual project reports, uh, or project and lab reports, each worth 14% of the grade. And then there's that fifth assignment, which is those best contributions to the discussion boards that I previously discussed. Both assignment four and assignment five will be due during whenever the course's final exam squad is scheduled. They'll essentially form the final assessment of the course. Other important things I want to draw to your attention um, are, here we go. Um, Communication, so use office hours or the discussion boards to ask questions. Um, and if some examples of the expectations for professionalism in course messages and message boards will be provided as a post to the message boards themselves. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I really need to talk to you guys about in terms of the syllabus. I don't think so. I think that covers it. So before I finish up this part of the lecture, let's go over how this course is going to work, again, sort of at a higher level now. Um, so the lecture materials will be posted to Blackboard. So what you should do first is review one or more of the reading assignment, either whether it's a textbook reading or an online reading, um, or watch the lecture videos, or go through my handwritten lecture notes, or any combination of those that you like. Uh, they essentially all cover the same thing. Um, and then, to check that you haven't missed everything, go through the slides I'll post, which will be quite short, and they'll just have sort of high-level summaries of the materials and the important concepts. Some of these may be very bare bones. Much of what, we'll talk, what I would normally have done in class would be go through these slides and do interactive problem solving in a face-to-face -face class, and we'll do a lot of that during the tutorial periods in this course. 
Again, the tutorials, again, these are going to be used for that inter interactive problem solving using PolEV um, and so for solving some example problems. Um, you can, and also for help with homework, uh, the projects and lab reports when there's extra time. Okay, so that's the end of part one, uh, and we'll pick it up after.